Hello, hello, everybody. It is 9.05 a.m. Central Time on the 12th of November, 2020. It's Thursday here in the United States, and if you're watching on Twitch Live, let me know if I sound okay. Apparently, I've got a Windows update ready to go. Just popped up here on the screen, and sometimes that messes with the stream. Go figure. So let me know by pressing 1 if you're listening live on Twitch, if it sounds okay. If you're watching back on YouTube, you're watching a premiere. You're not watching something live. <laughs> I have to tell everybody that sometimes. There's always a new group of people over there. So word up, much love either way. Let's get a display capture turned on. Everybody's telling me sounds great. So here we are. We're looking at Earthquake 3D, the program. If you've never seen it before, it's a program that keeps track of earthquakes. And we use the USGS, of course, and we also use the European agency, EMSC, to give us a good idea of what struck around the planet. And we're looking at about 48 hours worth of earthquakes right now. We can look at the whole week, and we can look down to just a few hours. But I look at 48 hours, it gives us a good idea of the areas that have moved in the last couple days. Just pretty basic there. So we're going to begin here in the West Pacific, and for again, for new people, the earthquakes that are raised high off the globe are deep down into the Earth. And the higher they are off the planet, the deeper they are into the globe or into the planet, I should say. There's going to be some people that disagree on the globe. but So down below the plates is where we have a lot of activity that comes up and spreads out and away from where the deep earthquakes take place. For instance, we've got a deep earthquake marked here at 569 kilometers deep today, 4.6. And that's on top of the deep 6 that you see here. We had a deep 6.0 range quake down below the pinnacle tip of the plate right here next to Fiji. And we watch for shallower, larger earthquakes to spread out from where that deep 6 is. And that's just if it was a deep 6 on its own. With additional new deep earthquakes down around the same depth, some even deeper, as you can see, We've got something going on below the plate all the way from New Caledonia here back to Fiji and all the way down to New Zealand where in the Kermadec Islands we had a 4.2 last night down at 400 kilometers deep. And the perfect point for me to get into New Zealand, check it out right here on the North Island of New Zealand in the middle of the catcher's mitt position as we call it, east of Auckland, but it looks like a catcher's mitt. Right in the middle of the catcher's mitt is a volcano. And let me take you down there and show it to you. Again, we're going to go on Google Earth now and go into the middle of the catcher's mitt. And here's White Island Volcano. Now, last year, White Island Volcano had something happen at it where there was a bunch of tourists out on the island. They were taking people out into an active crater. Here, you can see a picture of it on the screen, I hope. And they were taking people into this. And an earthquake struck a couple days before this event happened, while all the people were there, it blew. And a lot of people were injured and killed. A lot of people were killed, a lot of people were injured. It was a big deal. And they ignored the earthquake that had struck in the middle of the catcher's mitt just a couple days before. It was a five-point-something earthquake that struck there. Well, the reason I'm bringing up the volcano now, we need to go over and open up the Volcanic Ash Advisory Center and just look at this. So you'll see this. It, it says, New Zealand GNS confirmed no eruption, but ash is present within steam plume. Apparently, whoa. Whoa, what was that? Apparently a steam plume erupted out of White Island. And long story short on that, ash was included with it. It went up God knows how far, 6,000 feet. Observe VA cloud. Flight level 060, that's 6,000 feet. And basically, they're trying to just say it was a steam plume with a little bit of ash in it. I don't know why they would try and downplay an eruption at White Island other than it's a tourist attraction. And they're trying to shift blame on this eruption from a few years ago still in court and so forth. But nonetheless, it's in the middle of the catcher's mitt position. We have a warning going for the North Island. We have a warning going for the south tip of the North Island of New Zealand by Wellington. And we're looking for 5.0 range activity. So we have a deep earthquake below North New Zealand. We have a warning going right here. And at the halfway point between the two, between a warning point and the deep earthquake, that's where White Island just did its new thing with its steam and ash. 
Over to the west, a spread of the same sized earthquakes. This pinkish colored earthquake is the older of the bunch. It's a 5.5. We can actually even get that out of there once the feed refreshes here. Just wait for it. Hold on. Sorry, guys. Okay, get the 5.5 out of here. Here's what struck since the 5.5. And I think most people's eyes are going to be drawn to what's up to the north. 5.7 came in right in the middle of the Izu Ridge. And let's just get the information on this. 5.7 Volcano Islands, Japan region, Izu Ridge. Let's turn on the USGS tectonic plates to show you where the Izu Ridge is. It's the thick red line here on the screen. Now, why am I making even a big point about this or anything? Issued a warning for larger earthquake activity to strike on the Izu Ridge, 6.0 to 6.5. And a 5.7 came in. So, I mean, that's within the magnitude. Certainly within the magnitude, it's definitely in the middle of the location warned, and it's within the time frame. So, it's an earthquake forecast direct hit on the Izu Ridge. Following this 5.7 up, over to the west, a 5 and a 4.8. Two separate quakes struck right next to Taiwan or North Philippines. I'll call that Taiwan. Now, why does that matter? Well, if we take the 5 plus the 4.8, it equals 5.048. You could round it up to a 5.1. Why does that matter? Well, the Europeans reported this 5.7 as a 5.2. You don't see it on the feed here anymore. It's been over 50 earthquakes and it's fallen off the European feed, but USGS has it at 5.7. Europeans have it at 5.2. Does it really matter it's within a half magnitude, right? Well, it's the same size. Whether it's a 5.7 or a 5.2, it's in the 5-ish range, and they're on both sides of this. See the red lines again? 5.7 or 5.2, hard to know which, and over here, 5. So 5 and 5 on both sides of this, and I've talked about this for years, that we watch for about the same sized earthquakes on both sides within about a day of each other, as energy is traveling up and around towards Japan, and we have double-sided arrows there, because sometimes if the energy is big enough, if there's a big enough shift that takes place on the coast of Japan, you can see energy go down the other way down towards Indonesia and really increase things big time seismic increase when that happens well that's not happening at least not right now it's going up towards Japan which the next stop up here is going to be on the coast of Japan Tokyo going up to Hokkaido middle point coast of Honshu it's our most famous earthquake zone on the planet pretty much still how big well we should take the 5.7 plus the 5.0 and that equals 5.8 but if the Europeans were right and it was a 5.2 well then we should see something like a 5.3 to 5.4 pop off on the coast of Honshu. Again, what's the difference? It's between a 5.4 and a 5.8 on the coast of Honshu. Now, you'll also notice we have a big open area here with no earthquakes in Papua New Guinea, and we have open areas between our sets of quakes here at the Solomon Islands and Vanuatu, and going back down around the bend, the U-shaped bend of the plate here between New Caledonia and Fiji. All three spots here between New Caledonia and Fiji here between Papua New Guinea and Solomon, or between Papua New Guinea and New Caledonia, and here at the middle point of, I guess that's western Papua New Guinea, all three locations are going to get hit by something bigger than what's on both sides currently. So if we have upper fours, what do we have? A 4.8 on one side and a 4.8 on the other. Let me highlight those. 4.8 on one side, 4.8 on the other. We go down in the middle, that middle point should be something bigger than what's on both sides. Same with back over to the east. What do we have? We have a 4.8 and a 4.9. Pretty basic stuff here. So we watch at the middle point for something bigger than the combined total of what's on both sides. Same with back over to the east even further. We have our 4.9 and our deep 6. But this one should be something a little bit larger than 5.0. I would put it as high as 7.0 potential next to New Caledonia in the next few days. So Fiji, New Caledonia maybe as far west as Vanuatu, where the deep 4.9 is. But I would look at the middle point along the bend of the U-shaped bend of the plate. Let me show it to you here. I would look between our sets of earthquakes, and at that middle point east of New Caledonia is where I would watch for the new shallower, larger earthquake that could go up into the 7 range. The other two spots to the west, the middle point here, and the middle point here, should both be in the 6 range. So it should still be big, but it, I think, is going to strike the most right next to the big deep earthquake in this case. Now spreading out from there, though, sixes are nothing to scoff at. If we go up into the mid-range six level, that's actually enough to cause major damage over here. 
And then we go over to the west and we have a big open area again. This one's an open area between Myanmar, where our earthquake is, and all the way back down over to East Timor. East Timor is right here. So the middle point brings us in right here at Sumatra. And guess what just happened here? Mount Sinabung just erupted. And that was a pretty big blast. So let's just go see who's on the list for today over in Indonesia. We'll start at the top of the list. So Dukono in Indonesia, regular eruptor every day. Fuego in Guatemala on the opposite side of the plate. White Island, we already talked about. Sanjay in Ecuador. Sabancaya in Peru. These are in South America. Same with Riventador. Fuego again. Suwanese Ajimas in Japan. So far, I'm only counting one volcano. And that's, again, Dukono in Indonesia. But now look. Mount Semeru in Indonesia. 100... Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> that would have been major. 13,000 foot high. I almost thought it was 100,000. Let me get a sip of my coffee. Add another zero on that. That would be bad. It's not, though. It's only 13,000. Who else is on the list? As far as I can tell, that's everybody on the list for Indonesia, which is way low. We have to go into yesterday to get any more eruptive activity. So the amount of eruptive activity in Indonesia is extremely low. We've seen 10 and 11 different volcanoes erupt in one day's time across Indonesia when we were going through major seismic unrest like two years ago. So in this case, two, one of them is here in the middle of our open area. The other is right here where this whole broken apart section of the plate meets together in an S-shape bend. So I'm going to look at the middle point since Mount Sinabung erupted and the eruptions now have dropped off and the seismic has now dropped off, but we're getting a bunch of deep earthquakes all around it, I would put a warning for a new upper five to be coming rolling in right next to the volcano. That's in Sumatra, Indonesia, or I shouldn't say right next to the volcano, on the plate boundary to the west of Sumatra, northwest tip. As we go up into Asia, same sized earthquakes going across Nepal, back over to Myanmar, they're within a hair of a point of each other, and they're both tied to this, the plate boundary, the thick red line that goes around the entire planet. And for some reason, I'm slowing down here. Oh, that's wonderful. Isn't that great? Okay, well, thick red line around the plate boundary going over into Europe. And we have threes. The USGS is just ignoring those earthquakes. So you don't even see them on their feed. So you have to get the info from the Europeans. But it all comes to a pinnacle right here where our arrows point together coming out of Russia, Tajikistan, and going down, or out of Kazakhstan, I mean, going down into Afghanistan and going west. Now, this is pretty interesting. A 4.6 earthquake, but look where it's struck. Kuwait. Again, it's not every day that I'm talking about Kuwait. It's at a 10 kilometer depth, so that is not exactly reviewed by a seismologist. It's auto-generated depth at 10 km on all these earthquakes around the world. But let's just go see what's in Kuwait. Is there anything here of any significance? I think Kuwait has something that we... Whoa. What the heck is that? Looks like a military base of some kind. What is that? It's gotta be. Oh, yeah. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, okay. Do we have anything else out here of any significance? Maybe there's some oil wells. Are these also military? No, this is oil. Look at that. Holy cow. Look at that. The amount of... Where are the oil wells? Let's go see. Yeah, this is all oil, guys. All of this is oil. But I'm trying to find the, the wells themselves. It's kind of grainy, a little hard to tell. I'm 100% I'm on that, though. I, yeah, these, these, they're massive. What is this? Is it housing? That's ho these are the houses. That's what the houses look like, just so you guys can know the difference. We got the, hey, there we go. Look at that. You've got the shadow of the Derrick. You've got your ponds. Oh, look, ponds. They're injecting water. Oh, look at the craters. Hold on. Oh, my God. Dude, look at the craters. You know what the craters are from, right? 
Oh my god, look at that. This is when they, okay. Kids, let's flash back to like the 90s. Or the late 80s, early 90s. And there was the Saddam Hussein invasion of Kuwait. Which then led to Desert Storm, or Desert Shield and Desert Storm. Or was it Desert Storm and Desert Shield? Anyway, the country of Kuwait was overrun by Iraq. And then the whole world came together in a coalition, or most of the whole world, uh, came together, any of the military countries that are, you know, global military, uh, came in and basically drove Saddam Hussein back into Iraq, right to the border, and then they stopped at the border. But then they came back in and went back in and invaded Iraq again, and that's a separate war. But anyway, that's what all the craters are from. Unless a meteor hit there. So we're at an oil field. Now, why does that matter? Well, before we go any further, I shared something on social media yesterday about the professionals acknowledging that oil pumping operations, where they're injecting wastewater into the oil pumping operations now, fracking basically, that the wastewater injection, we already know, they've talked about that leading to earthquakes, but over in California at the oil wells, not at the gas wells. So they're doing wastewater injection at the oil wells to get out oil sometimes and gas. And... Previously, people said that oil wells were not vulnerable to earthquakes at all at any time, wastewater injection or not. I got attacked for years by professionals who said that there was no relation between the oil wells, wastewater injection, and earthquakes. Well, now they've changed all their literature to say <laughs> and, and to reflect the new findings. So look, I mean, this is how it goes in science. You think something's wrong or right, and you end up getting proved wrong or right. In this case, they were wrong. They thought that there was no relation between earthquakes and and oil wells and wastewater injection for years. And then there was a big increase in activity in Texas and Oklahoma and the West Coast in California, and that's what this new study that came out referenced. Now, in California, it's also ironic that they did the study right off the San Andreas. That's part of the headline, but I don't think that's related. I just think that that's just a coincidence, personally. But who knows, you know, coincidence or not, oil pumping operations are getting hit, and Kuwait is a good example of that right there. Now, going to the West, we go over to Turkey. And let me show you the plate boundary again. This is, you got to remember the plate boundary map here. Just try to memorize it as much as you can. I've got the arrows on the map on the globe showing you where the expected flow goes. And many of those arrows fall along the red lines. But going over into Europe right here at Turkey, right where the two meet, where the two plate boundaries meet, where the USGS has no line connecting between them, that's where the earthquakes are striking. In between the two, right there, eastern Turkey. Right at the tip of our arrow, coming out of the Mideast, going over into Turkey. Then, over here to the west, that's where our 7-point-something earthquake struck this past week. And tsunami hit. Pretty big, too. You guys should go see some of those videos, man. Have you guys looked at the videos of the tsunami over in Greece this past week? Hey, here, hold on, hold on. Let me see if I can find a few. This is educational, so we can definitely do that. Uh, let's open up a copy of YouTube. And go over and search Greece... Turkey tsunami for the past week. Now let's just do the, this month and maybe more than a week ago. Oh man, wow, they really. Oh, here's RT. I don't want to. There we go. Watch this. So I'll just turn down the volume. Look at this. So this is legit footage. There's many compilations of this, guys. This is from the Disaster Compilations channel. And you guys should subscribe to them, by the way. They do a pretty good job of bringing all the stuff. So look at the people there. They're watching this come in. And as they're watching it come in, it's pretty obvious. Uh, it's something nor bigger than normal. Something bigger than a storm wave. And it keeps surging. And notice, they start to notice pretty quick that the wave is surging and it's going to keep coming. And it does. It comes right up over the dock comes up onto shore and keeps coming in. And it goes in for at least uh, a couple hundred feet at least in. Now, this is just at one spot. There's better shots of this. It was bigger, of course, closer to the epicenter. But you start seeing something like this come in. You start. You better start. Look, uh, unfortunately. Right. Hold on. Right there. Okay. What I'm seeing in this shot is a younger man and an elderly man. They're both there watching the waves recede because this whole thing had to take a half hour at least to happen. The wave had to pull out 
You had to see the water recede out into the bay, completely disappear out there for hundreds of feet out. You see exposed shoreline, and you have an elderly person there. That's not smart. Now, the wave comes in, of course. Here's another shot of it in a different part of Greece or Turkey. I don't know, again, which part, but you see. It starts coming in big time coming in. And it doesn't stop. It goes on for a while. It starts sweeping the cars away. Now, when this happened, when the tsunami happened, guess what? This is crazy. When this tsunami hit, the USGS didn't report it. They ignored the, they ignored the wave. No tsunami warning, no tsunami anything. I had to go and search the buoys. My video is still on YouTube where you can watch me doing that. They did not have any kind of advisory or anything on it. They completely ignored the tsunami. The USGS completely ignored this and pretended like it didn't occur. Here, watch this. Watch this wave come crashing into this place. Here it is. Watch. You can see the water at the door right there. You see it? It's starting to surge up. It's starting to come up. Water's starting to pour in. Boom. Water flows in. The weight, obviously, on the door. And next thing you know, the whole office is flooded. And these, again, we got so many shots of this. It's amazing. Now, this one, this one, check this out. This part, this is just, to me, you can see the waves are, the ocean is receded. You can see the rocks out. Look at the little kid. Do you see this? This is why I need everyone to be smart. I don't care what country you're in. At this point, in this day and age, you should know if the ocean recedes out and you suddenly... Suddenly, the ocean recedes out further than you've ever seen before. Enough for you to get out your camera and start recording. You've got a little kid there. And then the waves start to come back in. It's all of a sudden, you're like, wow, look at that. The water started to get a little unsettled. I don't know what's happening here. Let's see. Let's keep recording. And it starts surging up on the beach. You're, you're, now, if you hear the audio on this, this person's calling to their kid, telling them to get out of there. They got the dog. Oh my God. Oh my goodness. Oh my God. Yeah, o OMG guys. So anyway, just taking the time to show that to you as the USGS ignored that that happened right in here. They ignored it. They I video documented it. They literally ignored a tsunami and didn't report it. So you had to come online to people like me to get the info. <sighs> All right. Now, since then, that's where the big earthquake happened. Right down here where we're still swarming out. And obviously, energy is still trapped and releasing there as more flow keeps coming in. One more time. Let me explain this to you one more time. Flow comes across where the red lines are. And it goes into Europe. The flow hasn't stopped. So this broke. And it still continues to swarm. And a push has gone up across Eastern and Central Europe. Not over to the West yet. It's still stuck right here. Now let me take you back two days. A deep earthquake happened right here. I think it was in Serbia. Right next to Bosnia. A deep earthquake happened. You don't see it on the feed here anymore. It was down 100, 300 something kilometers down below Europe. Then a new five popped off here at Albania, Montenegro. Subsequent 5.0 range activity has struck. Two sets of fives has now struck here, right on the back side of our little arrow. It's, there's a little arrow telling us which way we expect energy to flow out of Greece. And it's a perfect hit. Five-ish range activity. Check it off the list. Four-ish range activity, 3.9 to 4.0, struck over in Romania, which is in the magnitude of what we were looking for, within the magnitude. So you can check off Romania. And you can check off Bosnia going back down into Albania. Don't forget, Croatia was also hit earlier this week with a 4.6, which is just north of the tip of the arrow. So tip of the arrow to the north, tip of the arrow to the south. Both have been hit. Again, it's a smack spot on hit. Earthquake forecast hit. Yesterday or two days ago, 4.0 range earthquake struck up in Switzerland again. Right at the Austria border with Switzerland or Luxembourg. Not often you hear about Luxembourg. Let me show you where Luxembourg is. It's this tiny, itty-bitty little thing right here in the middle next to the 2.1. That's Luxembourg. And it just got hit. I think that's Luxembourg. Am I right? Oh, no, no, wait. That's not Luxembourg. 
Luxembourg's up here to the north. What is the little, oh man, what is that little town or that little country called? Dang. I need, it's the one I didn't learn. Hold on. Liechtenstein. <laughs> the one you never remember, guys. Come on, man. Luxembourg's the other small one up to the north. This one's even smaller. Liechtenstein. Liechtenstein. Achtung. Achtung. Erdbeben. Erdbeben. Ding, 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 ding. What does Erdbeben mean, guys? It means earthquake in German. German. Oh, man. Oh, man. Okay. Enough. Enough shenanigans. Let's carry on. Over to the west we go, and we have twos coming out of the Pyrenees. This is South France, uh, Northeast Spain, and it goes out into the Azores and the Canaries. So, so far the Canaries have been hit, but the Azores is quiet. The flow is stuck back in South Europe. And one more final thing before we move out of Europe. A new deep earthquake has struck. It's only in the two range. What is this, 2.9? Let's just call it a deep three. A deep three down below the south boot tip of Italy, or just north of the volcanoes there. Now, it's the second deep earthquake. So we had a deep earthquake down below Croatia and Bosnia, and followed up by a five. Now we have a deep earthquake down below Italy. I would think that too would be followed up by something in the upper four to five range. It's not too far of a hop, skip, and a jump from where it just happened. The only other spot left to move is Italy. Central Italy to the north, north side of central Italy, and that's Norcia basically. And it didn't get hit this past week. So far a deep earthquake, that's it. Let's jump all the way back across. Oh, wait. Hold on. Dude. A new deep earthquake. 750 kilometers deep. Now, you guys know there's a cutoff for the measurement and reporting of deep earthquakes? 750. So this earthquake here could be deeper. Most likely is. Most likely is deeper than 750. The chance of it being right on at 750 at the cutoff point is... <laughs> come on. So it's likely deeper than 750. But again, their cutoff point for reporting is 750, as far as I know. And this could be 1,000 kilometers deep. But it's down below North New Zealand on the Kermadec Islands, if you will, or the ridge that connects to the Kermadec Islands. Let's go down to New Zealand and just go take a quick gander. Here we are. So a new deep earthquake right down below the catcher's mid again, but it's on the northwest side, more close to Auckland, I would say, wouldn't you? Let's go down and see how close we are to Auckland on that. New deep earthquake. Uh, yeah, Auckland right in here, and the new deep earthquake somewhere right next to it. Yep. Wow. We've got ourselves a deep disturbance going on down below the area between New Zealand, Fiji, and New Caledonia. Hence my warning. I've got the warning going up here. Boy, I wonder if I should reassess now. <laughs> I have to reassess live. Let me get to sip my coffee while I think about this for a second. Okay. So we've got ourselves deep earthquake activity here now. We have previous deep earthquake activity right here. We've got White Island sending off some kind of large steam burst with ash. Up to the north, we have a deep six. That's a lot of deep all the way up here. Should spread out over to the west. That's the way we expect the flow to go, to the west and to the east. Spread out in two directions, and the third is down to the south. And, well, it's spreading down to the south. Another way to look at this would be that the whole area from up here, over to here, and down to here, or from New Caledonia over to Fiji and down to the Kermadex. It's like a triangular area right here. Down below it, major force is coming up. So that means it's going to spread up, out, and away. Should go, I guess. Again, this is a guess. All three directions. I don't have very many examples of 750 kilometer deep earthquakes down below North New Zealand. I mean, there's just a handful of them. We had one happen. I want to say it was two years ago. A deep earthquake that happened here that was in the deep four to five range. And then they replaced the deep four to five down at 750. With a deep eight. A deep eight happened here. And when the deep eight happened, spreading out from the deep eight, a line of sixes and 6.5s up to 6.9, basically sixes, went out from the eight all the way around the planet. 
and came back around, back down into Indonesia, and culminated with a cluster of sevens. So a line of sixes went all the way around the planet. It was like five or six different 6.0 range earthquakes leading in a path from that two years ago, the Deep Eight, all the way over, up across, back down through Alaska, back down on the coast of Japan, and dead-ended back here. So it went around and back. And when it came back, the impact was huge. As a matter of fact, there was a volcanic eruption that accompanied that that created a tsunami at Mount Krakatoa right here where the 5.0 is. That was two years ago. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen now. I'm just saying that the last time that we were really dealing with 750 kilometer deep or greater deep earthquakes here was two years ago when they replaced that one with the deep eight. Okay, let's jump across because like I said, energy flows out to the west, which we've already talked about at length, and energy flows out over to the east where the arrows point. Now the arrow points down to the south in Chile, and then there's a middle point between the two arrows, and that's where the biggest cluster of earthquakes is. That middle point, we call that the fulcrum point. The southern arrow points down to where our cluster of earthquakes stops, and Villarica Volcano came back on the list this week. New eruption at Villarica Volcano, right here where the travels underneath point exists. So our earthquakes come down to the volcano that erupted. Then up here to the north, right here, Sabancaya erupted last week with a 30,000-something foot high blast. That's where the rings overlap, South Peru. North Peru, we get just north of Peru into Ecuador, and we have Sanje and Riventador both erupting here, where the letter V is. Central America, it's a stepping stone path of the same sized earthquakes. Look, 4.4, 4.4. Getting down into the middle of it, a 4.8, and what's the other size? There's another 4. Let's see. 4.3. 4.3 and a 4.8 at the middle. And a 4.7 to the south. So it's, again, they're all about the same size. They're within a hair of a point of each other. The 4.4, 4.4, and 4.3 obviously are three of the same sized earthquakes. Then the southern tip, 4.7 and 4.8, again, those are two of the same sized quakes. So all of Mexico going down past Guatemala, down into Costa Rica, all moving in the past couple days. In the middle of all of this, Mount Fuego is erupting at the letter V, and Popocatépetl is erupting at the other letter V. And let me show you on the map again here. It'll make more sense. Fuego is erupting right here. Popocatépetl is up here. But Fuego is right where the two plate boundaries meet. And that's where the predominance of the activity is taking place. Fuego is putting off more blasts than Popocatépetl along the plate boundary. So where the two plate boundaries meet... That's where the more blasts are happening, and that's where the earthquakes, the biggest, are taking place. 4.8, right here, Fuego, letter V, where the plate boundaries meet. Then, going over to the east, we have a spread of activity that tends to go all the way over to the eastern side of the Caribbean. And the same sized activity that strikes here, you can add it all up, and it tends to strike over here on the eastern side, from Puerto Rico, over to the eastern Caribbean, within a few days' time. Uh, you'll see right now we're only dealing with twos and threes in Puerto Rico. But we've got all of this with eruptions too going on across Central America and in an increase. One more time, an increase in volcanic activity at Fuego right here where the plate boundaries meet. Kind of letting us know that there's traffic coming in on the road. Or if there's a train getting ready to go down the track. So, we're going to look down here at the end of the track. The end of the track. Right over here in between our previous sets of earthquakes from this past week, which I don't know if we're even going to see it. We don't see the Venezuela quake. So I'd warn the Eastern Caribbean going from Puerto Rico over to Pele, Montserrat. Now back behind it, we have a separate warning going, and I'm not going to expire that one till two days from now. Let's see, hold on. Yeah, Saturday. On Saturday, the warning for Cuba expires. And nothing's hit so far, at least as far as I know. There may have been something there, and I just missed it or something, but I have not seen any earthquake activity there reported at all from Jamaica to Cuba. What size? We were looking for mid-range to upper four, maybe even five. So now that's two spots where I'm watching in the Caribbean for 5.0 range activity, basically. One at Cuba, the other all the way over here in between Puerto Rico and Montserrat. United States, lower 48 Ah, uh, let's also talk about Alaska and Hawaii, too. We'll work everybody in today. So, let's start up in Alaska. Notice, 4.3, all the way up in the Aleutian Island chain. And look, hey, 
They reported an earthquake yesterday. Oh my gosh. A 4.3. Wow. Two of the same sized earthquakes. What do they have in common? A size from their magnitude being the exact same. They're both on the plate boundary. One up here in the Aleutians, the other over here at Haida Gwaii. Connected on the plate boundary. And in between, we have smaller earthquakes that go up, around, and down into the Pacific Northwest. Now, this is the Juan de Fuca fracture zone, which has been shifting. And it's been shifting pretty heavily. Let's go look at the tremor map and see what's going on. So, on the tremors, these are little red dots that signify a vibration as the plate shifts. Look at this. This is yesterday, 11-11, 520 different epicenters, 520 different vibrations, most of which are happening up in Washington, right at the border with Canada, going into Vancouver Island, going across the Strait of Juan de Fuca and quite literally spreading across the whole south tip of Vancouver Island. The other clusters are smaller, but they're equally spaced to most, all the way down across Oregon into California, 520 as of yesterday. Let's go back a day. Let's go back one day to the 10th, 462, about the same, within 100. And the predominance is up in Washington at Vancouver Island again. But notice, between yesterday and today, the area in Vancouver Island is spread. It's growing in Vancouver Island. So, but, down to the south, you'll see down in Oregon and California, it's clustered. Let's go back a day to the 9th. 655. And we're dealing with four clusters again, but... Really, again, it's pretty much the same areas. Northern California, Southwest Oregon, and up at the Washington-Canada border region. So we can keep going back day after day, and you're going to see hundreds and hundreds of these. And normally, there's like 10. 10, 20, 30 at the most. Maybe there's even some days where there's none. But when we start seeing hundreds and hundreds of these every day, and they add up to thousands in the course of a week, we call that a slow slip, an episodic tremor slip, where the plate is slipping or vibrating as it's shifting. So these are magnitudes assigned to this, but they're really just small vibrations. There's no real breaking going on, not like faults that you would think with an earthquake. While there are magnitudes or vibrations associated with that. Now, what do these areas correspond to? Well, out in the ocean, there's something called the Juan de Fuca Fracture Zone. You can see it here. It's like a zigzag shape. It's a letter M shape. The jagged edges belong to the Pacific Plate. And tension is created or power is put into this area from the Pacific when it goes into motion. Remember, the Pacific Plate's in motion from all those deep earthquakes coming up from down below, spreading out over to Europe and up and around into the Aleutians and across over into South America. All of our arrows showing us where we watch for energy to flow. One more time, I'll show you where the arrows are if you're new. So we watch for energy to flow out, up, around, over, and down into the United States. North American Craton coming in from the northwest. And it comes in through the Juan de Fuca Fracture Zone. And then we get all this vibration on the plate here in the northwest, Vancouver Island, going down into Washington, Oregon, and California. And these arrow points of the jagged edges of the Pacific Plate, plate point into where all of our vibrating is taking place. So each pinnacle point of the Pacific Plate pushing into the Juan de Fuca transfers over to the east and drops off all this vibration. Think of this more like coming up into the plate. Like this is the bottom of a bathtub and this is the side of the bathtub up towards the top. And you push in on the bottom and it comes up through the side, up to the top. And that's where this vibrating is taking place. So why does it matter? Well, as the plate shifts and vibrates, guess what accompanies that? Not just vibrations, earthquake activity. And on the north side of there, right where the Juan de Fuca comes into the north side, up here, that's where our four point something earthquake just struck yesterday. Queen Charlotte Sound, four point whatever. And it's the same size, again, that 4.3 that struck up here on the north side, same size as what's over here in the Aleutians. And connecting in between, a stepping stone path of the same sized earthquakes, all in the 2 and 3 range. Well, that's a big drop off from where we were, which was 7.6 and tsunami. There was a 7.6 and tsunami here. So wait a second, there was a 7 point something earthquake over in Greece in a tsunami? And then the next week, within 7 days or so, maybe 2 weeks at the most, not, not 2 weeks, 10 days, we have another tsunami. And this one's in, well actually the first one was in Alaska. The second one was in Greece. 
but two in two weeks time basically it's insane so a big amount of movement on two sides of the planet two tsunamis we were dealing with now the flow is starting to go into the United States hence all the movement hence all the shifting of the plate down here one more time all the little red dots why are these all occurring because the red line is shifting the red line is shifting all the way from back in the Aleutians all the way back down across and into the United States which goes into the North American Craton now something happened last night aside from all these little red dots all these little red dots are the vibrating as the plate is shifting but let's go show you what happened in Oregon something happened in Oregon last night something that no one can explain except for me and I'm not happy about being able to explain it but everybody tried to say or not everybody my viewers did not disagree but the hot spots the hot spots let's go look in Oregon and go take a look at the state of Oregon in shortwave infrared and look at last night look at that so every little red dot is a detection of a fire signature or a heat signature that's going up into the multi hundred degree range let's say four five six seven hundred degree range maybe even more and it's all across the state of Oregon and it goes up into Washington and it goes all the way across the whole state of Oregon across the coast up to the mountain range and it stops at California basically just a, about 50 miles north of the California border just stops carries on over east into Idaho these little black dots this is last last night yesterday afternoon so the go-to fake whatever explanation that was put out by the deniers and the professionals trying to say that first of all they tried to say that it was only me who could see the hotspots that was in the vice article that they wrote about me well once everybody could start to see them they had to come up with another explanation they tried to say it was farmers burning their fields over on the new madrid seismic zone well we know it's not farmers burning their fields here it's pine forest and not only is it pine forest it's pine forest and volcanoes and they're not burning farmers fields here and certainly they're not burning them overnight and certainly they're not spread out across two three states all at once at the same time that kind of coordination would be insane to do even on a military level let alone from farmers who are not related to each other so the explanation of farmers burning their fields is a laughable childlike grossly negligent explanation for the hot spots and I'm not accepting their explanation by the way we reject their explanation now we can for certain because these hot spots are not being caused by farmers burning their fields as a matter of fact we've even seen them out in the ocean unless you think it's kelp farmers out in the ocean burning their kelp maybe it's SpongeBob down at the bottom of the ocean making some kind of fire I again this is such a joke to try and say that it's farmers burning their fields so you can even see this on the natural color fire view for last night now I don't know if you'll be able to see it you should be able to here's right after sunset you should hopefully be able to see it here on the screen it's a little bit hard to translate through the stream just because of the bits per second and I'm again streaming at a certain quality but you guys can come over and check it there is no disputing it it's showing again back up on shortwave infrared let's go look at particle size near infrared so again this is going to take us to last night you should even be able to still see it on there too look at that here's yesterday going in just after sunset okay so what could cause a bunch of hot spots here in Oregon just pop up along from the coast up into the mountain range well there's only one thing that's going on from the coast up into the mountain range from on the coast of Oregon let's go and show you one more time these 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 are happening along the coast of Oregon going up to the mountain range which is nothing but a bunch of volcanoes by the way the mountain range is exactly nothing but volcanoes all the way up we've got a mark you can see them it's the state of Oregon so all of this ties together the hot spots the earthquakes the seismic activity the tremors as the plate is shifting the ETS the episodic tremor slip the plate is slipping it's releasing heat 
That's it. That's the only explanation that we could come up with. You couldn't tell me that was chance or coincidence or farmers burning their fields or anything else other than heat from the plate shifting coming up on the coast of Oregon. Now, wouldn't that lead to an earthquake? Wouldn't you think an earthquake would accompany that? I would think an earthquake would accompany that. I know there's going to be other people who wouldn't, but whoa, we'll have to wait and see, wouldn't we? Since I don't have many examples on the coast of Oregon lighting up like that, that's all in just a couple hours' time. That's in literally a couple hours' time where those hotspots just suddenly appear across the whole state. Going over to Idaho, by the way, going across Oregon over into Idaho, right to here. And going up across southern Washington, right through here, across the Oregon-Washington border region. Well, do you guys know what's at the Washington-Oregon border region? This. The biggest volcanic cluster in Washington. That's where the other hotspots are going up and around. So, nobody can explain this as anything else other than heat being released as the plate is shifting. It's not too far of a stretch either. I mean, heat rises and... The plate is up above magma, and if the plate starts to shift, and there are cracks in the plate that go all the way through the plate, should release some heat upwards. So one lone earthquake over here in Idaho. Let me make sure I've got the right feed turned on. Hold on. One day, 0.0, .0 and greater earthquake feed. Let's just hit refresh one more time. Make sure that's accurate. Okay, the number of earthquakes across Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Montana, has fallen through the floor. There are four earthquakes. Four. Normally, we're dealing with a handful to a cluster to a couple dozen different earthquakes coming out of the northwest on the edge of the Craton. It's all locked and loaded right now. All of this is shifting, building tension, but it's locked between here at Yellowstone, which is at the Wyoming-Idaho border region where the arrow is. It's all locked west of the Craton edge west of Montana. It's building energy. Hence the hot spots. Shifting, releasing heat, but no transfer over to the edge of the Craton yet, meaning that rock and that plate is taking that tension right now. It will break. Soon, I would think. Not any long period of time here. I would think in the next few days we're going to be seeing a significant sized earthquake. Up here in the Pacific Northwest, somewhere between Wyoming, which is the Yellowstone National Park, and all the way back up here to Haida Gwaii, and all the way down here to Northern California. So what would be the halfway point between all three, the triangulated point between Yellowstone, Hecate Strait, and Eureka, California? Well, if we go right in the middle of it, it puts it in Oregon, where all the hotspots are. But I would lean towards the edge of the middle point, which is right out here off the coast of Oregon the pinnacle tip of the Juan de Fuca Fracture Zone. So let's just go ahead and do that. Let's issue a warning now off the coast of Oregon for a significant-sized earthquake to take place, not mega. How big is significant? Well, I consider a 6.0 or greater earthquake large, and I consider a 4.0 or greater earthquake just to be moderate, so that would mean it would be in the 5-ish range. Now, here's a problem. They don't report 5s off the coast unless you say something. They hide them. They don't want people to see the earthquakes out off the coast. So they literally go years without reporting fives off the coast. Did you guys know that? They don't report fours, fives. They don't want to alarm people out off the coast. So you have to say something to them about them not reporting the earthquakes. Then it gets kind of pressure on them. And then they, they debate it. I'm sure somebody makes a phone call to somebody. And next thing you know, they get an earthquake on the feed just to satisfy the lack of earthquakes of reporting. Because it's suspicious. I mean, it's the most seismic zone on the active seismic zone in the at least in Laurentia on the North American plate. We should have at least a few fours and fives every month. And instead, ever since I came around and started to note them, they stopped. They used to happen on a regular basis. And I started making note of them, and I forecast. Let me tell you a story. I forecast a 6.0 earthquake to strike out here, like six years ago, five or six years ago. And a professor from the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network, the guy who ran the dang place, came out on social media dogging me hard. And I mean ripping me a new one. The guy was making up all kinds of accusations about me. I couldn't believe it. I, I thought it was a troll account or something, but it turned out it really was the director of the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network. And he said, there was no chance of me being able to forecast an earthquake, first of all. And I called for a six, and he said it wasn't going to happen. 
couple days later, guess what happened? <laughs> right out here at the Pinnacle Tip, right out here just south of the Pinnacle Tip on the Blanco Fracture Zone, a 5.9 earthquake struck. When the 5.9 earthquake struck, I called for a 6. The professor had already said it wasn't going to happen, that it couldn't happen. He came out and said, well, it did hit. But forecasting 5s and 6s out here off the coast of Oregon is like shooting fish in a barrel. There's so many. They happen all the time, he said. Well, guess what stopped right after that? All the fours and fives basically stopped unless somebody complains. And then all of a sudden, a magic earthquake appears on the feed after many, many months without anything. It's like a miracle. Surely they wouldn't do anything untoward about the earthquake information, would they, Dutch? No, no, they would never do anything like that. No, they're totally honest, good people. Now... Let's go up here into Northern California. Oh, by the way, we're going to skip over the whole state of Oregon that doesn't report earthquakes at all unless you say something too. And even if they do, even if you do say something, they don't even report earthquakes. It's a seismically immune state. You're immune to earthquakes. Did you know that? Oh, wait. You're not? There's no such thing as earthquake immunity? Wait, why are there no earthquakes in Oregon then? I, okay, never mind. Don't ask any questions. That's the most important thing about doing science. If you want to be part of their science, don't ask any questions. Just wait to be told what to think. It's much easier. Hey, McLeod. Ah, uh, Sean. We're missing Sean. Sean Connery. Sean Connery. What you're experiencing, McLeod, is called the quickening. <laughs> oh, guys, come on, man. Okay, so we're going to McLeod. Let's go put the coordinates in. Let's go see what's there. Hey, why did Sean Connery play a Spaniard in Highlander when he's from Scotland? Hmm? Why did he play a Spaniard? I know, and I can't tell you, because you might figure out where to go and where to go in the real world. Find out the secret city of lost gold that Connery was trying to show us in all his movies. Man with the golden gun. Goldfinger. Zardoz. Plays the Spaniard, a chief metallurgist in the Highlander. Huh. Sure seems to be a lot of gold. Let's go put the coordinates in. Wait. Hold on. McLeod. Search. We're just south of Mount Shasta, southeast of Mount Shasta, or west of Brushy Butte Volcano, but I'm going to say we're on the flank of Mount Shasta, the Strato Volcano. McLeod is on the flank of the Strato Volcano. So, do you think it's related to the volcano if it's right next to the volcano? I would say it is. Let's go down to Bella Vista and see where this earthquake is taking us. This is going to take us into the north tip of the valley. So, we're leaving McLeod and going a few miles south. Look at that. We're right next to Silver Lake. Now, we're also north of a few volcanoes that are from our past updates we've talked about at length. But Silver Lake, we have to go back almost two years. Earthquakes started to strike next to Silver Lake before the fires broke out down here, down to the south, at Paradise. So all kinds of fires broke out down here after an outbreak of earthquakes up here next to Silver Lake. It may just be a coincidence. I don't have previous examples of it happening, and I don't have any examples of it happening since. So it could just be a one-time, one-off fluke that that happened, but we keep track of the earthquakes that strike there now, just in case. Down to the east-southeast, Belden, California. Let's go see what's there. Now we're a kilometer down inside of the crust. Californians. Californians. Where are we? We're southwest of Lake Almanor. And again, now this is taking us in next to a few things. First of all, do you see that? It says high voltage power lines. Now, this is something I haven't really been checking for so far. But look where we're going in. See where it says story, high voltage power lines? We can follow the clear cut of the power lines to the north and see how far it goes. It follows up this way at least as far as this juncture at Belden. But do we have any more up to the north? It's a little weird that we get so close to these. High voltage power lines, transmission lines. 
but I don't see any here. Let's go zoom in a little bit more. We have roads. The roads look like they're going down to mining operations. Is there mining going on here? Oh man, that changes everything. If we've got mines in here, I, I mean, that's where they're, that's what those are right up here on the north side. It's got to be gold or other precious materials in the ground there. Okay, we'll leave that one up in the air because that is, that's really close to all those old, what look like prospect claims. That's not forestry clear cut. That's like people have mined out the side on those hillsides there. And they don't put anything back. That's how I'll let you know that it's just like a, a mom and pop miner that's not replacing the trees like a company would with a, you know, replanting of back on the location. So let's go down across Western California or Northwest California and go look at geysers, Cobb and Anderson. The location on here, I started to see these coordinates pop up and I was like, wow, I recognize those coordinates. Anytime I see a 1227 coordinate, I know it's taking me in on the volcano there. So where are we? We're at a series of power generating electrical stations, geothermal turbines, pipelines that go out to drill points. And the drill points go down a few hundred to a few thousand feet to get the steam from this volcanic field called Clear Lake. And depending on which earthquake you click on, you're either going to get Anderson, Cobb, or Geysers, California. So the Geysers, the name speaks for itself, tells you what's there. Geothermal. And humans are tapping into it. They've drilled in. And that's where all these earthquakes are. Now, the number of earthquakes here has actually gone up. It went down to next to nothing this past week. But as it went down next to nothing, guess what went through the roof? Up here to the north the plate started to really go into overdrive shifting, which is still happening today. Like I said, the flow out of the northwest is cut off. The edge of the Craton is now quiet as we're waiting for a release to come out of the northwest. We should see a break up here pretty soon, which should then release seismic activity down across the edge of the Craton all the way to the east. Let's go down through the Bay Area and end up on the San Andreas with a 3.3 on the creeping section San Juan Batista, and again, this is the famous creeping section of the San Andreas. The star is where the earthquake is, and the red line is the thick red line that goes all the way down to Southern California. That's the San Andreas Fault itself. It's the plate boundary, and it's the way we expect the earthquakes to flow. So coming out of the volcano to the north, going down as far as this point here, east of Monterey Bay, we are on the San Andreas. Now, wait a second. Let's go pull that study on the oil pumping operations. Oil, earthquake, California, fizz. See if that brings up. There it is. Bit one day ago. Oil field operations likely triggered earthquakes in California a few miles from the San Andreas Fault. The San Ardo oil field near Salinas, California has been linked to earthquakes. So let's go read what they have to say. The way companies drill for oil and gas and dispose of wastewater can trigger earthquakes at times in unexpected places. In West Texas, edge of the Craton, guys. In West Texas, earthquake rates are now 30 times higher than they were in 2013. Studies have also linked earthquakes to oil field operations in Oklahoma, Kansas, Colorado, and Ohio, and they provide links to each of the Department of Interior studies. California was thought to have been an exception. Hence all the people who came out to all my videos and said there was no relation between wastewater, oil pumping operations, and earthquakes in California. California was thought to be an exception, a place where oil field operations and tectonic faults apparently coexisted without much problem. Now, new research shows that the state's natural earthquake activity may be hiding industry-induced quakes. What a tricky way to word it. As a seismologist, this is the author of the article now, as a seismologist, I've been investigating induced earthquakes in the U.S., Europe, and Australia. Blah, blah, blah. Most of these earthquakes are too small to be felt, but not all of them. In 2016, a magnitude 5.8 earthquake damaged buildings in Pawnee, Oklahoma, and led to state and federal regulators to shut down 32 wastewater disposal wells near a newly discovered fault. 
Large earthquakes are rare, far from tectonic plate boundaries. And Oklahoma experiencing three magnitude five or greater earthquakes in one year as happened in 2016 was unheard of. Wrong. Wrong. Sorry, I hate to disagree with them, but they're not taking into account the edge of the craton. The flow goes across the edge of the craton. And in 2016, the 5.8 we could go back to 2016, and you can go see what happened on the West Coast before the 5.8 struck over in Oklahoma. Do you want me to show you? Do you want me to show you what happened in... Here, let me, let me show you. 2016. Oklahoma 5.8. See if that brings it up. Up. Dutch sense. Wow. They bear I'm not coming up at all even by putting my name in there? What the heck? <laughs> okay. Ah, I hide it. Uh -uh. Okay. Dutch since Oklahoma 5.8. Let's leave the M out of there. What? They, look who comes up. Look who they, they... Frankie McDonald come up when they search me. What a joke. Okay. First of all, it wasn't a 5.8. It was a 5.3. Maybe that's why my video is not coming up. They changed it to a 5.8. Oh my god. Okay, here we are in 2016. Let's hit. Let's just hit play and see what happened. There it is. Wow, they brought the earthquake up by a full magnitude? Or is it a separate quake? Oh boy, here we are. Ah, hold on. What hit in Colorado? Look at the threes. Okay, here's what hit, here's what happened before the five in Colorado or in Oklahoma. A four and a series of fours and threes across the west coast, coming in on the edge of the craton. Oh, we can go back even before there. Let's see if we can go back to the start of the week on the update here. Let's hope I did. They upgraded it to a 5.3. There's our fours. Oh, and we're swarming on the west coast. Fours and swarming on the west coast. Let's just see if I show any more. And fives coming across the plate. This is 2016 now, guys. This is years ago. I can't believe that it doesn't come up when you search it in a search engine. That they have it hidden. I wish I would have shown more than two days worth in this update from four years ago. Do I have any more? I, I still can't believe they got me... Uh, I still can't believe they got me blocked. Dude. <sighs> well, you get to see it here live. You get to see all the other people coming up too. When you search my name, look at all the other people that are using my name or YouTube is putting them in, trying to lump them in with me. Meanwhile, you can't find the relevant information. Dude, that's deliberate. That is deliberate. And the Frankie McDonald thing? Come on, man. That is deliberate if I ever saw it. Now, over to the east. Let's go and look at these quakes over in Nevada. Going down into California. Man. Oh, dude. What an update this is. Shures, Nevada. Shures. Shures. How do you say it? I'm probably butchering the way it's pronounced. It'll be Shures or something. <laughs> People will correct me either way, even if it's not wrong. I think they just like doing that. Makes them feel special. Here we go. All right. So, Pilot Cone, Basalt Peak, Fisher Ridge, Black Hills North. That's where we are. We're right next to it. Within a few miles. So, I'm going to say it's related to the volcanic field that it's right next to. Down to the south, we go right into the middle of the caldera again. Next to Mammoth Mountain in the middle of Long Valley Caldera. Let's go pull that up. Mammoth Lakes. This is a super volcano. And we're back in the middle of it. We actually never left the middle of it. 
We'd been in the middle of it for several years at this point with earthquakes striking right next to this. See these? Well, maybe you don't. Geothermal turbines, where they drilled in to get steam to come up and turn the turbines, and there's electrical generation going on right in the middle of this. So it's already a weak point for piezoelectric energy to be coming up, electrically speaking, through the crust. Humans start generating electricity up on the surface. We perforate the surface with long tubes made of metal, and that's not going to act like some kind of antenna or something? Or plugging into the ground? Let's go and look up to the east-northeast. This is taking us into another volcanic field. Right at the California-Nevada border. Mono Lake. Mono Lake volcanic field. Look. There's Mono Lake. We're on the east side of it. Or you could even say we're closer over here to the Volcanic Hills Buttes. Volcanic Hills or Mono Lake. Or the Super Volcano. I guess we're really between all three, aren't we? But they're just a few miles in each direction. So it's just one lone quake. The bulk of these is still happening, are still happening, over to the east at the Monte Cristo Hills Volcanic Buttes, where the 6.5 earthquake struck like five and a half months ago, right here. And a tear in the ground. Again, a 12-mile-long tear in the ground. A fissure formed when that 6.5 happened, and that fissure is in the same direction as the earthquakes still are going. And they all connect. They connect back down across the border, down to the supervolcano. It's really just the whole area from the supervolcano over to Monte Cristo that's basically moving from here up and across to here this whole thing and it broke apart five months ago and it hasn't stopped moving since it's been catching most of the energy that comes down across the california nevada border once it gets to here directs it over to the east you'll notice the flow down to ridgecrest has been cut off since the big earthquake struck here if you live in ridgecrest you know what i'm talking about because you were going through the roof you were constantly getting hit with threes fours fives it was just keeps going, kept flaring back up as new pushes were coming in. But then a big enough push came in last year, or well, well yeah, 29 to six months ago, so 2020. Big enough push came in that it redirected the flow over to the east, following the trajectory we normally expect, over to the east. So it took it away from you down at Ridgecrest. Well, now, well, should break again and release back down to Ridgecrest at some point. I don't think that's going to happen this week. I'm just saying, in general, that's what should happen. Eventually, this will resettle back out, if you will, and allow for flow to go back down across the Owens Valley, back into Ridgecrest. Also, the flow coming down the San Andreas. Once it comes down to, let's say, Colinga or Parkfield, it jumps over and across the energy, across the valley, down to the east-southeast over to Ridgecrest. We see a path of earthquakes that comes down from where this 3.3 is and goes down to the south tip of the valley, dead ending into the Garlock Fault. Let me show it to you this way. Well, hold on. Let me show it to you on this map. Coming down the red line, getting down to a right about here, and jumping over to the east and impacting back down into China Lake, Ridgecrest, and the Garlock Fault. So far, that has not happened today. So far, a 3.3 last night has struck on the creeping section of the San Andreas, where down in Ridgecrest, we're only at a few twos, zeros, ones, and a couple twos. I would expect the increase to take place between here, at the creeping section, and here, down at Ridgecrest. Over to the east, a 2.0 earthquake out in the middle of the desert of Eastern California at the Nevada border. Two different twos. Or is it just one two reported by two different agencies? Hold on. Uh, 1455 UTC from one agency. How could we have... Why are they doing that? Yeah. And the USGS has the same earthquake but a few miles away at a different, slightly different time. 1455, 53 UTC. One second apart. Uh, okay. It's, again, it's just a variation in the way they're reporting. Both agencies have it at two. Where? They're within a few miles of each other. Okay, both are coming in next to Black Butte Mountain Volcano. Let's go in and take a look at Black Butte, see what the deal is with that. Well, we have black basalt on the side, at least on one side. The other side's shadowy, so it's a little hard to tell. But, yeah, that's one. Certainly is. There's probably others on the ridge here. That's the one that's marked. Shoshone. 
Shoshone is the location. Do we have anything else here out in the middle of the desert? Again, I go looking. I want to see if there's anything else here nearby. Do we have any kind of power lines or railroad tracks, all right? Two road systems come together right there. Okay. Nothing else? What's this? That's a bit odd. What is... Oh, power lines. Is that right? No? Yeah, no, it is. Power lines. Well, you just got to look. You just got to look. Follow the lines. They've got a tower there, tower there. It just keeps going this way. Power lines. Oh, boy, yeah, it just keeps going. Any out here? Man. If we have a set out here, I'm just going to just say, what? Here's a house. Oh, wait. No. That's not a house. That's a microwave transmitting sub... That, that, that's, that's a microwave tower with a line running right to it. <laughs> pew, pew, pew. Okay, that's the sound effect for your, your microwave radar and then earthquake sound, right? Okay, rumble, rumble. Uh, microwave, microwave tower. How can a microwave tower induce earthquake activity? Piezoelectric into the crust. How can that happen? Efficiency scaling. Mother Earth acts as a rectenna, a receiving antenna, and converts AC to DC naturally. Down into the crust. And that AC, I think, can even vibrate down these deep shafts that get drilled. And if they have any kind of mines here nearby, or if Mother Nature is punched up through the crust, that can lead to piezoelectric weakness. A place for the electricity to come up and out. Kind of like a thin point in a rubber glove. You're touching something electric, and there's a thinner point in the glove that's going to allow for the electricity to go through that. Or a hole in the glove might even be a better analogy. Can't tell me it's chance or coincidence. Hey, look at this old volcanic feature out here in the desert. Little, little butte there. Little weak point in the crust there that allowed for magma to come up at some point in the past and form a little itty bitty volcano there. Long time ago. Might even be from back when that was in the underwater. Do you guys know about that? Hold on. Do you guys know? <laughs> oh, man. This is where I always, the mud flutters are going to love me. Mud flutters, you're about to just think I'm the best person in the world. Okay, all of this was underwater at some point. Or at least the areas that are the salt flats are, were underwater. And the leftover remnants of the ocean that was here is over to Salt Lake City. You can see where the Great Salt Lake spread out, at least to here, but it actually went further. I would think this looked like the Caribbean at some point in the past, with mountains and volcanoes coming up out of the oceans. Now, since then, that's all been buried by sand and uh, over time been blasted away. This all uplifted at some point in the past. So this was all an ocean going up to the entire northwest. And you can even see the watermarks over on the eastern edge of where the ocean was. That's not from wind erosion. The watermarks I'm talking about now. And it flowed out in two directions. Apparently, this all uplifted at some point. Pretty quick, I guess. Within a few years, I guess. And in two directions, the two different oceans flowed out. One ocean was co contained in here, very high up above sea level, and rose and rose and then flowed out over to the east, dropping off all the sand over to the east into Kansas, Nebraska, the Badlands, basically. All these sand dunes. And they're all, you can see which way it flowed. Yes, they'll tell us it's from the wind, whatever. I don't buy that. I don't buy any of the official explanations on most anything now that I figured out that they were wrong about a lot of the other stuff. So I have to reassess all what we're told about the way the plate formed because they were wrong about basically everything, the professionals. It's okay. They won't ever admit they're wrong, but that's okay. So this was all underwater and it flowed out over to the east and down to the south, dropping all the sand along the way. And you can see which way it flowed through the Grand Canyon. Colorado River just flows through it now as the remnant. 
So let's go up here. Let's go out in the middle of Nevada. Rachel, Nevada. A 0.0 kilometer depth. You know what? People wrote me about Rachel. I said, hey, look, we got an earthquake out here at Rachel. I didn't bother to really look it up. They're like, hey, did you go stay at the alien? And I'm like, the alien? What's that? Well, here. This is the famous Area 51. And let me just go ahead and turn on our Google Earth community so you can get the info on the Groom Lake. You guys have all heard about this before. Area 51. And it's double long landing strip out here in the Groom Lake facility anyway. There it is. The earthquake's right next to it. And this is the nuclear test site, too, where we did all the underground nuke tests. That's what all these craters are here. U.S. nuke Operation SROM. February 4th, 1976. 200 kilotons. Pretty big. That's just one. All of these underground craters are from nuke testing. And Area 51's right next to it. And the earthquake's just north of Area 51. That's where the 1.1 is. Down to the south. Let's go look up this 2.2. Blue Diamond, Nevada. Blue Diamond. I don't recall ever having to look up this location. I'd remember that name. Let's go put the coordinates in and see what's there. This is what you got to do, guys. You got to look up every location. It takes all morning. If you start in the morning, you'll be done by the early afternoon. Look up all these spots. So where are we? Calico Basin. Wait, we're right next to Vegas. We're on the west side of Vegas. That's where we are. Is there anything else here nearby? A road. Okay, well, we've got a road. We've got a parking area. A trail. That goes this way. Out into the middle of nowhere. Why would you have a parking area and a trail out in the middle of nowhere? What's the deal? Why, why, why is everybody going out here? What, what? Why is everybody going there? Why do you have a parking area and cars parked there with, with nothing? I mean, there's literally, it's just desert. That's weird. Why, why would there be a bunch of people going up in here to right here? Is it beautiful or something? Let's go see. Let's just bring it down right here in the middle. See if we can see up in the valley or something. Right where the car park area is. I mean, yeah, I could see why... Okay, I can see why you might have a hiking area here. I could see it, but that would be extremely dangerous to get out and go... To think that you could go walk up in there. The perspective, the distance on there, it's got to be at least a mile. But, okay, that's why they got a parking area there, I think. Again, it's just because... Wait. What the hell? Okay. <laughs> oh my god. What the hell is going on out here? Hold on just a second, man. Well, how are you going to be on a bike in the desert out in the middle of nowhere? Look, look at him. It's like 50 miles from, from anywhere. And he's looking the other way. He's trying not to be seen on the Google car. You know what I mean? Like, deliberately looking the other way so that he can't be seen. Hold on. There's something out here. Hold on. My curiosity. Look, you can see him off in the distance. Start getting closer. Start getting closer. Now is your chance to be on a thing. And what does he do? He looks out to the open field to the west. Whoop, look, look, look at it, look at look at it. He's deliberately looking away from the car. And he's got his iPod. He's got his iPhone. No water. No water. He's looking over at this, thinking it's bones from an old cattle or something. You know, like a West Wild West scene. He's like looking at these. He's like, I could cut those open and get some water out of those. Got his hair all done. What the hell? Is this a glitch in the Matrix or what? What's going on there? Why would there be so many people parked and walk, riding their bikes and everything out here in the middle of the desert? Yes, it is west of Las Vegas, but it's in the desert. Miles west. I'm just... Whatever. Whatever. I get suspicious. 
I do. I, I might be unintentionally, unjustifiably suspicious, but nonetheless, I get suspicious when I see something like that. Let's go down to the west-southwest, shall we? Let's just get out of that whole cluster and go see what's down here out at the California coast. A 1.5. Ventura, California. Okay. Ventura. What's in Ventura? Put the coordinates in. I showed you the other day what's in Ventura. So this is just going to be a refresh for anybody who's a repeat viewer. For new viewers, look where we are. See the earthquake epicenter? See all these little pads in the ground right here? Every one of these little pads is a different oil or gas well. Wastewater disposal. And yeah, it's all over the place here. Ventura is well known for its oil and gas. They've even had big leaks here. You guys remember the big oil leak that filled up a ravine? It was flowing like a river or something. Anyway, that, that's where the earthquake is. It's right on the edge of the oil pumping operation. And I mean, it's literally right on the edge of it. And now the oil pumping operation carries on over across the valley over to here, where all of these are different oil wells as well. So we're connecting between here and here. And that's where the earthquake is. Ventura. 1.5. What about the 1.0? Is this a quarry blast? Hold on. Yeah. Hey, proof they can list a quarry blast if they want to. Let's go down to the east by southeast to Panoma, California. Now, I think this has taken us pretty close to the San Jacinto meeting into the San Andreas Fault. But I just want to see what's there. Is there anything of significance at the earthquake epicenter? Might not be. Turn on my place marks. Might not be anything here of any significance, but you don't know unless you look. There we are. San Dimas. Oh, man. Really? We're at San Dimas? That's just what's on the other side of the hill there. Anything else here nearby? It doesn't look like we have any marked pumping operations. That's good. I don't think there's any drilling around here, at least not anything current. We do have a quarry or some kind of landfill here. That's where the previous earthquake struck last week. We're north of the oil wells. Let's see how many miles north. I look within 6 to 10 miles. So the reason I look 6 to 10 miles, there can be a spread that far. It's 9 miles to the oil wells. How far to this one? 10 miles to that and 9 miles to this. So it, it, it is within the acceptable range, right on the edge or perimeter of what I would think to be too far away. Now, why do I look 6 to 10 miles? USGS used to look 6 to 10 miles in Oklahoma till they changed the state regulations to see if there was any other nearby wells, etc., between around the earthquakes and the oil wells in Oklahoma. We're out here in California. So I look 6 to 10 miles just because they used to in a different state. And I think the reason they used to look 6 to 10 miles is that's how far that they can have an effect, a drill. I think they can even drill that far. I know there'll be people that say they don't, but I don't really believe any of that anymore. I don't believe what people tell me anymore. I have to find it for myself. Again, I've seen, I, too many people have told me I was wrong too many times when I wasn't. So down to the east by southeast, we have a predominance of earthquakes going on the west side of Salton Sea with pretty much two sets of earthquakes on the east side of Salton Sea. One quake in the Mojave, 2.6. So most of the earthquakes are on the west side of Salton Sea. What is on the west side of Salton Sea? Let's go look. Let's go back to the USGS plate boundary map. West of Salton Sea, we have these, the San Jacinto and the Elsinore Fault. To the east, we have the San Andreas. And like I said, most of the earthquakes on the west side, well, we can trace that back up to the north. And it goes right back up to where the fault spreads out and goes over to Ventura. And it goes right back up to the north, where the fault spreads out and goes back up to the Garlock. So all the movement down here on the west side, it's just a path of least resistance. Instead of going around the San Andreas, it's just beelining it straight across the faults, down to the south, where it's slipping. All this is moving. And slow slipping. The professionals announced this was ETSing, episodic tremor slipping, five years ago. Southern California. Just like the little red dots that I was showing you up here at the start of the U.S. update. 
all those little tremors up here to the north. Let's again, let's get that back on the feed here. All the tremors here. Well, imagine them going on down here as well. They just don't list them on this map. They should. And if they did, you would see a connecting line of tremors going all the way down the coast. And you would see going from Washington, down through Oregon, down through California, a connecting line of tremors. But they don't want you to see a connecting line of tremors. You know why? They said there was no connection. <laughs> they said there was no connection. Idiots! I don't know why they did that, but whatever, for every reason, they did. And now they have to maintain that. So they can't put all the tremors on one feed. Otherwise, you'd see a connection across the coast. And you'd say, hey, look, there's a flare-up up north. That's a flare-up down south. Look, there's earthquakes in between them. There's a connection. It's that level of obfuscation, guys. It's hilarious. That's why I'm doing so well online. Everybody knows it. Even them. Come on. Even they know. The professionals, even they know. Let's go out here to Ludlow. Tell you a little story. A, a, a time when the professionals got it wrong. So a steam plume appeared out of the desert in the middle of July on a clear day with not a cloud in the sky. Came out of the ground just east of here. right, Pretty much right where this earthquake is. Just east of these lava flows. Pisgah Crater Volcano right here. And the steam plume was picked up on radar. Like I said, on a clear day. There wasn't a cloud in the sky, yet moisture returned being detected coming from a ground level and blowing up enough and spreading out enough that it blew up over and was carried by the Santa Ana winds, the moisture returned. All the way down here to North LA where it finally started to dissipate the moisture right about over San Bernardino. And this happened in 2011 in July. And my viewers found it. I didn't find it at first. My viewers contacted me and said, what's going on in the radar out in California? I had to go look and I was like, whoa. So I made a video. And I showed a steam plume coming and being detected on radar. Showed the location and said, look, it's a volcano. It's a clear day. I don't know what to tell you other than it's uh, some kind of steam erupting from a volcano. USGS freaked. They took my video, made a press release about my video. And this is in 2011 when I only had a few thousand subscribers. And they made a big old deal about it and said, a YouTube video claims that there's an eruption happening and there's no eruption, blah, blah, blah. It's a thunderstorm. This was on day one. This is so funny. Notice I said day one. On day one, they put out the cover story trying to deny my video, which was just saying, look, it's a steam coming from the desert. I think it's got to be related to the volcano. So they're like, it's a thunderstorm. Well, it was a clear day. There wasn't a cloud in the sky. It went on for two more days. It went on for three days straight from the same location. By day two, they deleted their press release, but you can still go find it in the Wayback Machine. It's hilarious. Other people made stories on it even. They're like, USGS has issued a press release from the California Volcano Observatory referencing this person named Dutch Sins who's claiming that there's an eruption out here east of the... And again, I just said it was steam. I didn't say it was erupting. I said, steam come erupts. Which, I mean, again, I mean, what was it? It was moisture from the desert on a clear day in the summer next to a volcano. So then it, people got creative. When it went on for three days, they deleted the story saying it was a thunderstorm. Obviously, it, it's a thunderstorm can't originate from the ground source, same spot for three days straight in a row. They tried to say it was a military blast. Must be the military out there blowing up stuff next to the highway. <laughs> well, the military weighed in on that. They contacted me and asked me to take down my video because they were worried people were going to come in from the south all the way down here on foot and traverse the desert from 29 Palms military base. And they were going to die in the desert, and they wanted me to take my video down. And I asked the guy, who was the communications commander at the base, who contacted me below my video and asked me to call them at the base, and I did, and would call their switchboard and put me to a secretary, who put me to the commander of communications at the base back in 2011. And he said they weren't doing any explosions out there, and they don't, of course, do bombing runs along the highway. And uh, that they were just worried people were going to come in and try and access the area through the base. And they didn't want my viewers out there traversing the desert. And so could I take my video down? And I said, no, I can't take the video down. If I do that, they're definitely going to go out there to investigate. Instead, let me put this disclaimer up on my video telling people don't go onto the military base. And stay on the highways if you're going to go out there. And, and I, I even told my video, in my video, my viewers, I said, don't go out there. It's the desert. What do you think you're going to find? Blowing steam? This is miles wide. It's more like, I bet it'd just be like a hazy day. Uh, if you're at ground level, it probably just looked hazy and humid in the desert. But on radar, it's a moisture return coming up and blowing away. That's what happened here in 2011. They tried to deny it for three days to four days. 
Then, within a couple weeks, a 5.0 earthquake struck right next to the spot. Now look what else is here going through the area, just as if we needed any more weirdness going on. We have a large electrical transmission line, a series of transmission lines, going right next to the area. And it's one of the only spots in the Mojave Desert where it's going through. It really is. Right across the road and right up next to where the earthquake is. That's where the 2.6 is. So a line of quakes. Let's recap. Line of quakes coming down from Northern California, starting up next to Mount Shasta, going down across the valley, going down to Geysers, where we then go down across the San Andreas to a 3.3, the largest earthquake of the day so far, basically struck last night, on the creeping section of the San Andreas, east of Monterey Bay. Same time that's going on, a spread of earthquakes going down across Monte Cristo Hills Volcanic Buttes, over to Long Valley Caldera, and pretty much bypassing Ridgecrest, going over to the east, spreading out to our volcanoes, our nuke test sites, and out to a weird spot <laughs> where we got a guy riding a bike in the middle of the desert, hiding his face from Google Car with no water or anything. Okay. Then, down to the east-southeast, a spread of earthquakes, but they're all small. Tremors, if you want to call them that. Going from the oil pumping operations, down here to the east, all the way to the border. One lone earthquake down south of the border, down in Mexico. 3.6, and you could say that's the largest of the bunch, but it didn't strike in the United States. Over to the east, the Oklahoma oil pumping operations and fracking ops have been hit, as well as Table Rock Lake, down in south Missouri as well as the New Madrid Seismic Zone, which, by the way, speaking of the hot spots that we talked about earlier, there's hot spots have returned back on the New Madrid Seismic Zone as well. I guess the farmers are reburning their fields. <laughs> I guess the farmers are reburning their fields, Dutch. Ah, oh, they didn't burn them much, much the first time. Need to get out there again and do it again. Get her done. So is it going to happen again today? That's the true question. Uh, let's see. Can you see it from yesterday? You can't see yesterday. We're looking at shortwave. It happened just before yesterday. So, let me see. Hold on. Did they wipe it? Uh, you can't see. Again, we're looking at 200 images. So, this is going to be like last night. Damn. All right. Well, today you're going to see it if they're back today. But it was all across Arkansas and to southern Missouri. Again, series of hot spots. Ah, uh, you know why I'm making a big deal about that farmer thing? When the hot spot start, first a beam came shooting down out of space, going right down into where the spot is here at the Missouri-Arkansas border next to Success and Maynard, Arkansas. And then a swarm, earthquake swarm, broke out right there. The hot spots picked up, and thousands of them just right here, not anywhere else. <laughs> and then people tried to say, the USGS waited, and the skeptics came out and tried to say it was farmers burning their fields. Hilarious! Now it's really funny because now they look like blooming morons for saying that. Whoever said it was farmers burning their fields needs to have their head checked. They're just a denier. They're just a, you know, we shouldn't even listen to them. They just they're kind of lost the right to debate because you can only listen to foolishness so much before you have to throw out the deniers. So trying to explain it as farmers fields doesn't explain it on the West Coast or over in the ocean. And I'm saying they're related. And if you don't agree, it kind of doesn't matter because nobody's here to hear what you think. Okay. And now, no offense. I'm, I mean, you didn't build your thing for 10 years trying to find stuff that people said didn't exist. I did. By the way, harp rings exist. I found the U.S. Army experiments creating them up at Harp in Alaska. People said that didn't exist. People said fracking couldn't cause earthquakes. People said wastewater disposal couldn't cause earthquakes. People said there was no relation between earthquakes. Hey, I've got a question for all the deniers and all the people who don't like me. If you guys are so smart and you're so on top of it, how did you miss the earthquakes going across the Craton every week for the last eternity? Since they've been measuring earthquakes, how did you miss that? How did you miss that it matches how did you miss that it goes down through Texas and back up into Oklahoma and over to the East Coast with all pretty much the same sized earthquakes in a week's time? How, how did you miss that 
every week for the entire life that you've lived. I would say that you're not as observant and as justified in your critique as you think you are. And that you missed something so glaringly obvious, a spread of earthquakes going across the craton, that everything else that stems from your gross error has now interfered with you understanding what the rest is happening around the rest of the planet, what the rest is taking place. You, you can't understand that because you are refusing to see that you were wrong about a spread of earthquakes happening across anything. Now, why am I taking the time to address that? Because... Geophysical metal, geophysics metal winners. The professor who I mentioned, for instance, said it was chance or coincidence that the earthquakes were following the plate boundaries and following the craton edges. That was five or six years ago. It's happened every week since. So anyway, there's a spread of earthquakes and you can follow the spread of earthquakes following the arrows, which we have on that map here for you to identify pretty easy. And we're looking for large activity to spread out from the West Pacific, particularly next to our deep six, shallow seven, and a series of sixes to fill in our middle points all the way across the plate, going out over to Sumatra, Indonesia, and going up towards Japan, where our middle points should be filled in with, again, upper fives to low sixes, with a seven next to the deepest event, deepest, biggest event. United States, little bit different. We've got ourselves a slow slip going on, a spread of earthquakes going across the edge of the craton, and we're looking for a big release off the coast of Oregon now. Should be in the upper five range, if they report it. They won't be able to hide the increase that comes down into the plate. So while they can hide earthquakes out in the ocean, since nobody's there to report them or feel them, they really can't hide the earthquakes that strike on land. All they can do with those is downgrade them. So, for instance, when the five comes rolling in here to California, I mean, I told you how dishonest they are, right? The, the professionals. So they would probably downgrade a five to a 4.9. If it was a 5.1, 5.2, 5.3, 5.4, they would probably take it down to a 4.9. They can't have that many fives in the course of a year in California because they said there couldn't be. And they can't be wrong. So, in other words, they'll change the earthquake to be something else so that they remain right. <laughs> I'm serious. You think I'm joking? I'm not. I'm not. So there's a spread of quakes that's going to go across the plate in the next few days. And we should see it break out off the coast, if they report it. And we should see it go on land, which they can't hide, but they sure can downgrade. But either way, we're going to see it go across the plate. It'll get everybody's attention, and you'll wonder if it's a bigger quake. And then you'll look at it, and you'll see them downgraded to like a 3.9. <laughs> you'll be like, it knocked things off shelves. Uh, it broke sidewalks. And they have it listed as a two. So what else is going on? Wait a second. How did I miss this? A 1.5 earthquake up here in New York? What? Hold on. Wilson, New York. <sighs> Eastern edge of the craton is moving, but I need to go look it up because... Well, first of all, we got that four-point-something earthquake over at Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, right next to that mansion. The mansion belonging to the guy who donates to the Boys and Girls Club or something. It's so freaky. Wilson, Niagara, Niagara Falls. We're at Niagara Falls? That's where we are? That's where we are. Is there anything else here nearby? Isn't there power generation going on here at Niagara Falls? I think there is. I, I mean, I might be wrong, but you think they would have some kind of power generation going on at the falls. Here are the falls. Parking lot. If they haven't harnessed this for electronic generation, electric generation, I will be just shocked. That would be foolish if they didn't. Uh, do we have anything else here nearby? Again, I, I have to look for everything. I have to look for drill points, electrical. There are drill points up here in, I think, New York. Certainly on the Canada side of the border over here, there are. Let's just show you what they look like. Oil and gas pumping operation. Just to show you how hard they are to find. 
Do you see that? There's the oil well. There's the tank. But look at it. From this level even, you can't even... Like, I would have to zoom in all over the... Here's another set right there. There's another jack and tank and pump for oil now. They're, actually, it might be gas. They might be doing gas on there. You'd think it would be gas because of the methane. So is there more up here to the north? They're on the south side of the border too, down here. Brackwell, oil and gas. But again, when you zoom in on them, it takes forever to find them. Man, you know how long I had to look to find these? Let me just tell you. Took a long time, man. So up here, are there any? Probably. Probably. I would think there would be. And all I need to do is just go in through the fields and go inspect and see if I could find any. But doing that live is a real pain in the you-know-what. So we'll have to come around and see if there's any other earthquake activity up here. I usually wait for more than one to strike. If more than one earthquake strikes, then I start to look. I mean, I'm looking right now, obviously, but if I see more than one, I'll really put the detailed study into it and go find the nearest wells. Right now, there's one. If I don't see a well exactly at the epicenter, I'll just move on. And I don't see one at the epicenter, so let's just move on. Hopkins Beach, next to Niagara Falls. Anything else? I think that's it. So I said I was going to cover Hawaii too, didn't I? Let's go out to Hawaii. The Big Island, where you have another 3.0 range earthquake that struck in the Middle East Rift Zone. How big did it go? 2.8, 2.9? Let's see. 3.1. 3.1, and the location is spot on at Kilauea. So should I pull the 2.9 or the 3.1? It doesn't matter, either or. Volcano Hawaii is the location it's triangulated from. And for my Hawaiian viewers, guys, we've been waiting for this for now almost two years. Almost two years we've been watching and waiting. Starting to get to the point where you're getting repeat activity up here at the top of the Middle East Rift Zone. That's the crater for Kilauea. This used to be a lava lake and a flat crater that you could look out across. Now it's a giant open pit in the ground. Gravel pit filled with water, no less. And this collapsed. The Middle East Rift Zone is filling with magma, and now we're getting earthquakes up at the top of it, at the base of Mauna Loa. What's causing that? Magma. Red, hot, burning magma. Spreading up, out, and around the Middle East Rift Zone. Going down to Lo'ihi. Going all the way up here to Hualalai. Up on the northwest tip of the Big Island. And of course, spreading out around the Middle East Rift Zone, which is refilling. And I've shown this at an angle so many times. I'll do it one more time. Well, not, not one more. I'll probably do it many more times than that. In the next several months and weeks. But weeks, weeks and months, not months and weeks. Proper time schedule. There we are. Kilauea, and Kilauea has collapsed down into the Middle East Rift Zone, which this is the Middle East Rift Zone, rising from down below the magma chamber. And up at the top, Kilauea. And the earthquakes are happening at the top. Now, we've gone all the way around the outside edge of this. This whole thing has taken two years to shift and move and refill. How do I know it's refilling? Well, look at it. Its whole perimeter is lined with earthquakes. It's going up to the top of the magma chamber, right up at the top by Kilauea. That would mean that the magma is refilling the whole area. And it's spreading out to the other volcanoes nearby. Hence the earthquake up next to Hualalai, up on the northwest portion of the island, up here. The other ancient volcanic chain that most people don't even think about when they think about Hawaii. They think about Kilauea, Mauna Loa, Mauna Kea, down here. They don't think about the ancients up here on the northwest side. But that's where the earthquake is on the northwest side. So one lone quake, which is almost the biggest of the bunch, it's 2.8, 2.9, near 3.0, on the northwest tip, and then a big cluster going up to 3.0 at the Middle East Rift Zone. It's refilling. Eventually, what will happen, I think, I could be wrong, but I think it will refill to the point where stresses start to build inside, and it blows and it'll blow out a new crater. As opposed to a collapsed caldera, it will put out a new blast. That blast will be big, but it will eventually happen. Then you might even get a new lava lake up inside of there. 
So taking you back to the start of the update, this is the last seven days feed. We have our deep earthquakes in the West Pacific. We're watching for a big outbreak to take place in the West Pacific, going up to Japan and over to Sumatra. We're looking for an outbreak on the West Coast, probably in the five-ish range, assuming they report it. A spread of earthquakes to go across the edge of the Craton. I didn't even talk about Colorado, by the way. Colorado got hit twice. Two pumping operations in Colorado. I, I don't want to even get caught up in that. Should be big. We should see some big activity this week. 7.0 next to our deep quakes. Hey, that includes for the people in New Zealand. Look, I'm leaning toward... If I'm wrong, let's just say I'm wrong, and it goes down towards Kermadex. Instead of going towards here, it goes down along the plate boundary to the south, if I'm wrong. So I hope I'm right. I hope it goes over to the west, out in the middle of nowhere. But we have to watch. Anything else? That's it. You guys, you need to have an earthquake plan. You need to know what to do when an earthquake strikes. I say this in every update. I don't know who takes it for serious. You should. You should take it serious. Let's talk about you for a second. Your preparations and how you are or are not prepared for disasters like fires and floods and earthquakes. Severe weather even. You need to take shelter? Well, do you have a place to go? Underneath a table or a desk? If you don't have a table or a desk to get underneath for an earthquake, and you live in an earthquake-prone area, why don't you? You can go to Goodwill and even get a desk or something to get underneath that's wood or metal, so kind of don't have an excuse. You should have something to get underneath a table or a desk. You should also have an exit plan. An exit plan to get out of the structure that you're in in case you're in a big earthquake that's going to knock down the structure. Or let's say the structure is not capable of withstanding a moderate earthquake like brick or cinder block. You need to know where to go outside. So, take the time right now to develop a plan where you're going to go outside. Make sure your friends and family know where that is. Make sure that your co-workers or the people who you're around know where to go. And make sure they know where the emergency kit is. That way they can grab it if you're not right next to it. Good idea on all those things. Your emergency kit, change of clothes, set of shoes, flashlight, batteries, first aid kit, sanitation, food and water for a few days. Seasonal specific. Don't forget to make it seasonal specific. So if you live in a cold area, you need to have that cold survival gear. I know it's a pain in the you know what, but you got to do it. You might last a few hours outside if it's freezing cold outside. And you don't have that. Think of the elderly. Think of children that you have. Think of the disabled. You might even want to have a little bit extra. That way you can barter or help someone if they need help. That you can at least have the ability to think about helping people. You won't have to be completely selfish and hoarding all your stuff just to protect it for yourself. The time now, 10.53 a.m. Central Time. I'm going to save this as a video. We will go put it out over on YouTube. You can watch it back as a premiere with me in a, an hour or so. And if anything big goes down, I'll jump back on at a moment's notice. Like I said, Izu Ridge at the start of this update. Japan, Izu Ridge, check it off the list. Also check the area over by Taiwan off the list. But that means it's coming up your way. And Sumatra, you can check Mount Krakatau off the list. But I would look next to Mount Cinnabon or the Northwest Tip. Over in Europe... We got like a day left to go in the warning for Italy. Not even. Like 24 hours, basically. 24 hours. So 24 hours left to go in the warning for Italy. So far, Bosnia, Croatia has been hit. And Albania, Montenegro has been hit. And Romania with a four. So I would look for at least a four to come into Italy. Oh, uh, Switzerland was also hit. To your north in Italy. So all sides of you has moved on a four to 5.0 basis. Except for central Italy itself. You might get off lucky, and nothing hits, and I'm wrong. But we got one more day to go in the watch. Please keep watch for the next day. That it? That's it. I'm out of here. Peace out. Much love.